Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna unbox and review this new Wi-Fi 7 gaming router by TP-Link. This is the Archer G800 with a very fast speed rating of being 19,000. I will be doing my full-on speed test ratios with my following Wi-Fi devices. And let's take a quick look at the box. So right away, this thing does look like it's something straight out of Star Wars. It looks like you could change the different colors, a whole bunch to choose from very gaming focused however this can be used as a normal router as well but this is all the gaming stuff essentially associated so prioritize gaming with qos gaming ports gaming server to speed it up mobile gaming acceleration it is a tri-band so you got the three different bands the 2.45 and the 6 gigahertz band and it looks like you have some crazy fast ports 210 gig ports four 2.5 gig ports it looks like you can aggregate some to get five gigs uh eight antennas so let's just open this thing up and uh see what's inside so we got some documentation quick setup guide and stuff it does set up with the tether guide and this is easy mesh compatible which means if you get another tp link router that is easy mesh compatible they can form a mesh network we have an ethernet cord it does not say what it is cat 5e cat 6 cat 7 i'm not sure we have a uh this is for the factory reset basically it's kind of like a sim card remover but there is a factory reset you would hold it with that so we have the power cord it is 100 to 240 volts output is 15 volts at 5 amps which means it's 75 watts of power starting with the buttons we have a wps button a wi-fi on or off button an acceleration button which is for the gaming mode and an led on or off button right here so there are a lot of vents as you guys could see from the camera a bunch on the bottom as well i am hiding this info right here and it, it does have four rubber feet i do see an led right here and according to the box there should be an led over here as well on both sides i will film that so you guys could definitely see that and we have a power on and off button right here uh factory reset we have four 2.5 gigabit ports this one is labeled as a gaming port we have two 10 gigabit ethernet ports which is amazing because it can handle internet speeds of up to 10 gigs and if you let's say you have internet speeds of up to 10 gigs it'll go in at 10 gigs and come out as 10 gigs which is amazing uh, which also means it can support up to a 10 gig LAN as well and optionally you can use the 10 gig SFP plus port so if you do use the 10 gig SFP plus port you cannot use the 10 gig ethernet port just this one so pick your port this one or this one this one is always available but the bottom ethernet port or the sfp plus port that one is essentially shared so you use one or the other we have a usb 3.0 port and we have the power plug right there so i had a chance to set this up as my main router and it is pretty so these parts light up this part lights up this bottom part projects down that lights up and this side also lights up and i will demo that for you guys the speeds and range tests that I had a chance to do, those were also very good. Overall, this is a very good router. So let's jump in starting with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by the internet speeds, no matter how fast the router is. Again, when you're accessing the internet, your modem or your ONT or your DSL will be limiting those speeds. So as long as the router can take those speeds. Now this router can take up to 10 gigabit speeds. My internet speeds happen to be five gigabits per second upload and download. So it can easily handle my internet speeds. Now when I hook up my computer via ethernet to this thing, I do a speed test. I do get my full five gigs up and down, no issues. The Wi-Fi devices aren't as fast as that, but they're still absurdly fast. So looking at the results for the internet speed test, Wi-Fi 7 is just flying for the download speeds, not quite as fast on the upload, but still uh, in reference, this these are still absurdly fast speeds. Wi-Fi 6C, not as fast, but still very good overall. Now to find the true performance of this router, I do a local speed test. So I make my computer to the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer and this isolates the router. So no longer am I relying on my ISP, my internet service provider, nor the public speed test server, which can be busy at times. So looking at these results, I actually got slightly slower download speeds, but absurdly fast upload speeds. So just about the same for the download, but absurdly fast upload speeds. And Wi-Fi 60 also did better overall. Now we get into range tests. So range will vary drastically by location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you have a lot of obstructions, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range because typically the more stuff there is typically the less range you get so more of an open area typically the better results you'll get 
So at 20 feet away, inside my place, download was pretty much the same. Upload did drop for the Wi-Fi 7 device by quite a bit, but still getting absurdly fast speeds. Uh, and Wi-Fi 6C was less of a drop, but still uh, very, very good overall. At 50 feet, this is when I'm outside my place, still getting some crazy fast numbers. And even at 100 feet, the fact that I was still getting over gigabit speeds, both for Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E, is just really just absurd. It was just so fast. Uh, upload was obviously not as fast, but still getting really good speeds. And yes, the router can go further than this. I just capped my testing to 100 feet. Next, we get to set up a configuration and use the Tether app. And within the Tether app, it tells you what to connect where. It tells you disconnect your modem, connect the Ethernet, and then name your Wi-Fi. Pretty much kind of takes you step by step. And once you're done, the interface looks really, really nice. And I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna turn off Game Boost real quick just so you guys see what it looks like without it. And because this is a gaming router, of course you can use it as a normal router as well. It doesn't have to be used as a gaming router, but because it's a gaming router, it has additional gaming options. So you could do start game boost and then it'll detect my PlayStation 5 is currently on. And because it's currently on, it's going to try and boost that, prioritize that essentially. And that's why it shows up over here. And then uh, it also offers the game server acceleration by WT Fast, which is separate from TP-Link. So it looks like you need an account for that. Uh, port forwarding and gaming LAN port, you can use that port as well. So... Uh, aside from that, you get all the basic stuff, network online, how many clients are connected, how much traffic you've done, and then RGB lights. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to place it here, just so I could show you guys the different colors. So spectrum, rainbow, you could do comet. So it's the same exact colors on the other side as well. Uh, and then wave. And then you could do uh, fire. Basically, the LEDs look really, really good. And I'll, and I'll turn it around so you guys could see the side a little bit better. Um, but it's it's really, really nice. So loop. And then for the custom colors, you can actually choose a custom color uh, between a range of colors. If you wanted a you know specific color, you could do that, and it will match that. You can also turn it off during certain times. You can. So from for instance 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. the light will turn off or you could just completely have everything off anyways So you could do that as well. So depending on what you want um, You know you could basically there are options for that Then you go to security and then it finds stuff if there's an issue It always finds something for me because I have a guest network enabled I'm not going to disable that but that's something it always flags and then you can make profiles for your kids if you wanted to. You could do content filtering. You could block websites. You can do bedtime uh, during certain times of the day. Um, so let's click on bedtime. So if you want more advanced options, you do need to pay an extra subscription. And then with that extra subscription, you get more options over here on the bottom. Uh, and then for the more section, this is kind of where everything is. For Wi-Fi settings, you get three SSIDs, which are the Wi-Fi names. You get your 2.4 and 5 combined into one. You get the 6 gigahertz, which happens to be the fastest one that I was testing with. And then you get the MLO, which I thought was going to be the fastest one, but it turned out the 6 gigahertz was the fastest one. Um, so MLO combines all three bands. And uh, yeah, so then you can go inside and you can customize stuff. Um, BE is for the Wi-Fi 7, so... Um, I would want that enabled and the 320 megahertz, that's that's what's giving it all these crazy fast speeds. And then, you know, you get additional options for all the other stuff as well. Okay, so you can make a guest network if you wanted to, which I do. Um, and then you could do a separate 2.4, 5, and a 6 gigahertz if you wanted to. I just did a 2.4 and a 5. You could do IoT, so Internet of Things. So if you wanted your smart home devices to connect to that, you could do that. Um, Easy Mesh, if you get another one of these or a compatible TP-Link Archer router that supports Easy Mesh, you can combine them to create an, a mesh network out of them. You could do network optimization, diagnostics if there's issues, and operation mode. If there was more than one, you could say, oh, I want this to be the router or the access point. And then advanced settings pretty much is mostly for the VPN stuff, VPN clients. So if you wanted to add you know, VPN so everything is encrypted. Uh, port forwarding and then there are some additional options if you go to 192.168.0.1 not a whole much more options but there are some additional options that are not within the app and then rgb effects we kind of went over this with the uh, lights and everything 
and then for system just want to show you guys that the firmware is up to date uh, but it's a really really nice router so is it worth getting this thing why or why not well it depends on your specific situation but this router is amazing just hands down very fast speeds very good range it looks really nice in my opinion i mean looks are subjective but in my opinion the design is very very nice and with the leds on it honestly looks really really nice but the most important thing for me was performance and it definitely delivers on that so if you're looking for a premium router or if you live in a much larger home you want to get a two or three pack of these uh, i mean separately you can get them separately and then combine them into one mesh network with the easy mesh because uh, this is easy mesh compatible but this thing is an absolute beast of a router it really performed better than what i was expecting and i was already expecting quite a bit if you guys enjoyed this video smash that subscribe button and i'll catch you guys in the next one